I'm Brian Van, support by Dracure.com, and today we're going to do a product review on the all-new AGV K3 SV helmet. This helmet sells for between $199 and $259. That's going to depend on whether you're choosing a solid color or you're looking to go with one of the graphics. They do have some replica graphics that are part of the line as well. 3.7 pounds in a size medium-large on our digital shipping scale. No restocking fees here at STG. If you get this helmet from us, it doesn't fit like you hope. Remember, don't ride in it. Verify the fit inside the house. Wear it as long as you need to make sure you're happy with it. If you don't dig it, you need to exchange it. You'll avoid all the fees, avoid all the hassles. Free shipping for any order over $40 to the lower 48 United States with really affordable international shipping rates. Let's begin by benchmarking the sizing on the K3SB. I'm 58 centimeters. I normally wear a medium. I've got an intermediate oval head shape. I would rate this helmet as pretty much intermediate oval. I think most of the manufacturers now have really gravitated towards that head shape because it fits most riders very well. I've got a medium large in this. I enjoyed the fit. It was a good, comfortable fit. In their more racy helmets, I'll go with the medium small, right? Because I'm right to the top of that medium scale, 58 centimeters. I'll go to the medium small because I like that real vice-like race fit for the track, but for the street, I want a little more comfort, right? And that's where this one worked great for me in that medium large. Who is this helmet right for? Let's talk features and benefits first, okay? It has an integrated tinted drop-down inner screen. It's a great feature because you avoid the need for shield changes. You can leave your clear shield on the exterior of the helmet, right? So you're covered for when light conditions are low. And then you have the ability to, with the flip of a switch, drop down that tinted inner screen, and you now have protection from the glaring sun. So definitely more of a road-going helmet, I would say, than a racetrack helmet. Ventilation built into the lid. We've got an intake vent here in the chin bar right here. On or off, there's a hidden switch behind the chin bar. I'd also like to point out that real aggressive shell shape right there in the chin. That's a pretty cool look. More intake vents on the top in the brow area. We have two intake vents there. And then here on the very top of the helmet, we have another switchable intake vent. Come to the back of the helmet. Exhaust vents here. You'll also use a little, lose a little bit through the neck roll. Shield crack. Look at that. That is pretty cool. Centrally located button. You push it in the upward position. Get a little shield crack out of it, that helps with demisting. The shields are anti-fog treated, typically pretty effective at the end of the day. Certifications with this helmet. I see DOT stickers on it. AGV also claims it is ECE 2205. We've got double D-ring retention system. Comes complete with a chin curtain, fully removable, washable, replaceable liner, and they use some nice fabrics in this. We'll take this out in a minute and show you, but they've integrated the cheek pads and the neck roll into one piece like we see in their higher-end Pista, Pista and Corsa helmets. Another thing with this helmet that they tried to do, and you can kind of see it here from the side, one of the primary ways a collarbone gets broken in a motorcycle wreck is your head hits the ground, it pushes the helmet against your collarbone, that downward pressure breaks the collarbone. So what they tried to do with this is they tried to contour this a little bit to help avoid that impact with the collarbone. That's just stuff they've learned through racing. You see that same kind of technology used in that Pista and Corsa and everything begins to trickle down. To remove the outer shield, it's got a pretty clean mechanism. Got multiple detents on the way up. So if you want to ride with it partially open, you can do that. It'll hold itself in place. All you have to do is push down on this red tab and it pops right out. For reinstallation, we're going to just reverse the process, line this tab up like so all the way at the top, push in, and of course a mirror image here on the other side. Good clean mechanism. You are able to also remove this drop down inner, it's toolless, just kind of grab a hold of it and give it a good tug outward, pops right out. They made this really easy to change, which I think is definitely pretty cool. 
in the event you need to replace it. That one should last a long time because it's inside the helmet. It's protected by the outer screen, so at the end of the day, replacing that is probably not something you'd have to do very often. Okay, if you want to service the helmet, wash the liner. Remember, mild detergents, hand wash, line dry. Let it sit and dry, not put it in the dryer. To pull the chin curtain, you want to grab a hold of the plastic retainer and kind of push down and pull back at the same time, like so. Combination of plastic and fabric. We've got a combination of Velcro and snaps that hold in the cheek pads and the neck roll. What I like to do is I like to get my fingers in between the snaps and the helmet EPS to release the snaps so you don't damage them, right? And then from there, just kind of pull it right out. You can see all one piece. Okay, that's something they started doing with the higher end lids. They're doing it with this one now. This helmet is also communication ready. We'll show you the pockets in a moment that will accept the speakers. AGV has their own system out now, the share system. You'll see that on the website. There are multiple brands of communicators available, obviously. At the end of the day, installation of each one of them is, is pretty basic. Follow the instructions, it goes right in. You'll spend more time typically dialing the system in than you will integrating it in the helmet. Here is our top pad. And you can see that there are holes for the EPS to line up with the top pad so the ventilation makes it into the helmet. They also supply a filter for the very forwardmost vent. So if you want to filter the air that's coming in the intake, right, you're able to simply remove the top pad and stick that on. This comes included with your documentation for the helmet. Give you a quick look at the inside. Can you see that, Tyler? You can see all the channeling in the EPS. That's where we're going to get our airflow from. And if you look right in this area here, you will see the disc that is removable, okay, to allow you to install any one of the communicator speakers. So that's all integrated into the EPS of the helmet. What do I think? I think that this is very, there's very little price difference between this and the K3 helmet. I think they really stepped it up quite a bit, right? This helmet offers two shell sizes, four different EPS sizes, okay? Still got a thermoplastic resin shell, just like we see with the K3, okay? But the quality of the interior is higher. I believe the ventilation scheme is a little better. Improved shield. And we have that drop down under screen. So at the end of the day, definitely a step up from the standard K3. I'm Brian Van, SportbikeTrackGear.com.